Hi boys and girls. Okay, so I'm happy to be here with you again. I'm so excited that you guys have enjoyed the videos we've put up so far. I know Miss Quidditche um, has posted a video of herself reading The Three Ninja Pigs, which is personally one of my favorites. It's super funny and I love that it's super rhymy and it's just kind of a fun way of telling the story of the three little pigs and the big bad wolf. Um, today my story is The Three Little Wolves and the Big Bad Pig by Eugene Trevisas and the uh, artwork was done by Helen Oxenbury. Um, we are doing another, we're doing a bunch of stories about the three little pigs this week because we want you to compare them and contrast them. And what that means is when you are listening to the stories, we want you to think about how they're the same and how they're different from each other and how they might compare to the original story that we know from the, of the three little pigs. One of the things that you're gonna do is you're gonna think about all the ways that they're the same. You know, they might all have pigs in them, they might all have wolves in them, they might all have the same kind of houses or different houses. Um, but there are different ways, there's stories, each story has something different and unique to it and we'd like you to think about that. Um, I will be reading the original Three Little Pigs for you to listen to just for your pleasure so that you have the chance to enjoy that. And then for another one, just for your pleasure, that has to do with pigs is the true story of the three little pigs. Um, and that is told from the perspective of the wolf, which is very funny. And many of you have probably heard it because it's very popular and it's been around for a long time. All right, so let's get started. My story, the three little pigs, or the three little wolves and the big bad pig. Here we go. All right. Once upon a time, there were three cuddly little wolves with soft fur and fluffy tails who lived with their mother. The first was black, the second was gray, and the third was white. One day, the mother called the three little wolves around her and said, My children, it is time for you to go out into the world. Go and build a big house for yourselves, but be aware of the big bad pig. Don't worry, mother. We will watch out for him, said the three little wolves, and they set off. Soon, we're on this page, soon they met a kangaroo who was pushing a wheelbarrow full of red and yellow bricks. Please, will you give us some of your bricks, asked the three little wolves. Certainly, said the kangaroo, and she gave them lots of red and yellow bricks. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of bricks. Sorry, you're gonna hear my dog. <laughs> She's very anxious today. We're visiting one of my sisters, and um, so she's feeling a little anxious at a new place, but she's gonna be fine. All right, the very next day, the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of bricks that the three little wolves had built. The three little wolves were playing croquet in the garden, and when they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside the house and locked the door. Look at them playing croquet. How cute is that? The pig knocked on the door and grunted, Little wolves, little wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. So here's the pig. <laughs> then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed. But the house didn't fall down. Look at his face. I love the picture of the spit coming out of his mouth also. He's very intent on blowing it down. So I'm gonna, there you go. The pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his sledgehammer and he knocked the house down. The three little wolves had only just managed to escape before the bricks crumbled and they were frightened indeed. And look what they're carrying their little china teapot.
We shall have to build a stronger house, they said. Just then they saw a beaver who was mixing concrete in a concrete mixer. Oh, please, will you give us some of your concrete, asked the three little wolves. There they are, building their house of concrete. Certainly, said the beaver, and he gave them buckets and buckets full of messy, slurry concrete. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of concrete. No sooner had they finished than the big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw the house the wolves had built. They were playing battle door and shuttlecock in the garden. Those are kind of old fashioned games that people would play with, as you can see, a net and they'd have the little brackets with these are um, called birdies. And so those are kind of old fashioned games, but people still play things like that. It's called, I don't, I, I don't remember what we call it. Badminton, maybe that's what it's called. Anyway, but it's called shuttlecock and battle door. And when they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house and shut the door. The pig rang the bell and said, Little frightened wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed. But the house didn't fall down. Oh my goodness. So the house didn't fall down when he huffed and puffed at the brick house. And it's not falling down with the concrete house. When he huffed and he puffed at the brick house and it didn't fall down. Can we remember what it was that he used to knock down the brick house? Think about it for just a minute. And if you know it, say it out loud if you can remember. That's right. It was a sledgehammer. Exactly. So what do you think? I want you to think for just a minute. What could he use? He's already used a sledgehammer. Would he use a sledgehammer again on a concrete house? Think about it. What will he use to knock down the concrete house since it didn't work to blow it down? And remember, he is a big bad pig. I want you to think about it for just a second and say your guess out loud. And remember, there are no wrong guesses because this is a big bad pig, so he's un- reliable unexpected behavior happens all the time with him all right so here we go <laughs> can you see all of the picture there you go but the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing he went and fetched his pneumatic drill and smashed the house down and look look at your little wolves they're barely running out and i want you to see do they have their china teapot in their hand I want you to check each picture because that's kind of important to them. It was a gift from their mother, right? Here we go. We shall build an even stronger house, they said, because they were very determined. Just then they saw a truck coming along the road carrying barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. <gasps> Please, will you give us some of your barbed wire, a few iron bars and armor plates, and some heavy metal padlocks? They said to the rhinoceros who was driving the truck. Sure, said the rhinoceros. And he gave them plenty of barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. He also gave them some plexiglass and some reinforced steel chains because he was a generous and kind-hearted rhinoceros. So the three little wolves built themselves an extremely strong house. It was the strongest, securest house one could possibly imagine. They felt absolutely safe. So now that they feel absolutely safe, what do you think is gonna happen? Do you think the pig is gonna leave them alone now? Or what do you think? If you said that that pig is gonna come back, you were right, here he is. <laughs> there he is. The next day, the big bad pig came prowling along the road as usual. The three little wolves were playing hopscotch in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house, bolted the door, and locked all the 37 padlocks. The pig dialed the video entrance phone and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chins, let me come in. This is my favorite picture. Look at him leaning up against the house. 
no, 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 said the little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed. But the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He brought some dynamite, laid it against the house, lit the fuse. And what do you think happened? Do you think the pigs, the pig gets in? Do you think the wolves get out alive? What do you think? All right, guess what? He blew the house up. And if you would look right here, our three little wolves just managed to escape with their fluffy tails scorched. And as you can see, the little white one has some fire burn on it, and so does the, there they are, little fire burn, and look what they have. Something must be wrong with our building materials, they said. I really like that the pigs are thinking about their problem. They're problem solving. They're thinking, okay, so we built with bricks. That didn't work. We built with concrete, that didn't work. And then they built with the iron and the metal and all of that, that didn't work. So what are they gonna do now? What should they use? I like that they're, they're problem solving about their materials. We have to try something different, but what? At that moment, they saw a flamingo coming along, pushing a wheelbarrow full of flowers. Please, will you give us some flowers? Asked the little wolves. Oh, with pleasure, said the flamingo, and he gave them lots of flowers. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of flowers. That seems a little out of character, doesn't it? Usually, in our knowledge of the three little wolves, they begin by building their house. Do they begin with the strongest material? or with the weakest material. I want you to think about what you know. I'm not gonna tell you, I want you to think about it and you can listen to the other three little pigs story and find out what do they begin usually in the traditional story that we all know, what do they use to build their houses? First, second, and third. One wall was of marigolds, one of daffodils, one of pink roses and one of cherry blossoms. The ceiling was made of sunflowers and the floor was a carpet of daisies. They had water lilies in their bathtub and buttercups in their refrigerator. It was a rather fragile house and it swayed in the wind, but it was very beautiful. Next day, guess who came prowling? That big bad pig came prowling down the road and saw that house of flowers that the three little wolves had built. He rang the bluebell at the door and said, Let all frightened wolves with the trembling chins and the scorched tails, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So now I want you to think, what would you do? What do you think is going to happen to the pig? Is he going to need to get something new and fancy? Is he going to be able to blow their house down? What will happen to these three little wolves in their fourth house? Usually we only have three houses, right? This is their fourth house. Well, if you've made your guess, I'm going to continue. It says, but as he took a deep breath, ready to huff and puff, he smelled the softest scent of the flowers. It was fantastic. And because the scent was so lovely, the pig took another breath and then another. Instead of huffing and puffing, he began to sniff. He sniffed deeper and deeper until he was quite filled with the fragrant scent. His heart grew tender and he realized how horrible he had been. Right then, he decided to become a big good pig he started to sing and dance the Tarantella. That's kind of a old fashioned dance. And there he is singing and dancing the Tarantella. <laughs> At first, 
the three little pigs. They didn't quite know what to think of it. Or the three little wolves. They were a bit worried. It might be a trick. But soon they realized that the pig had truly changed. Can you see all of the pictures? Yeah. So they came running out of the house. They started playing games with him. First they played pig pog and then piggy in the middle. And when they were all tired, they invited him into the house. They offered him tea and strawberries and wolf berries and asked him to stay with them as long as he wanted. The pig accepted and they all lived happily together ever after. Okay. So that book is really different from what we know of the traditional Three Little Pigs. But it's one of my favorites because it's kind of fun and it's so different. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. So be sure to fill out your paper today about the your response to the reading. Tell me what you liked about it. You can even tell me what you didn't like about it. But I also want you to think, and you don't have to write this down, you can draw a picture. And in fact, on your response sheet, if it's too much writing for you, please turn it over and draw a picture about the part that you liked best. And, and then if you're not gonna write, I want you to draw a picture about what you liked best, draw a line, so split the paper in half, and at the top, draw what you liked best, and at the bottom, draw what you didn't like, right? The part that was your least favorite. So your favorite part, and then your least favorite part. But if you wanted to do all that writing, you certainly can. Um, and then I want you to think about how they were the same and how they're different from the story that Mrs. Quidditchay read, Miss Quidditchay read, and Mrs. Wasterdowski is going to read a book called Pigs by Robert Munch, which is another story that I love. So I want you to think about those stories and let us know. And um, we miss you, and we're looking forward to seeing you guys again soon, hopefully. And you can always make little videos and send them to our email, and we would love it. All right. Bye.